So Repo with this transpiring. You see Avalon after a winning Ursa with a spears right through the guardrail here, right into the fans. Oh! 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 Just that there alone, Avalon's action is now eliminating Ursa Ariano from this matchup. And now we're down to the final three. Aquera, Tessa Burrow, Night Terror. Gonna walk out of this match with an opportunity to face the women's champion at Pan Rodian 13. It's hard to imagine that I mean, even, even years ago, no one ever would have thought that you could be around long enough to even make it to Pandemonium 13. And here we are, folks. A few more months away. And then back to the whole incident involving Tessa, involving Avalon, Ursa, all that. I mean, you gotta, I, mean, I still just can't even wrap my mind around as to why Avalon would come out here and just go after Ursa Ariano for. Oh, they go close and close it. Oh! Close and close drop it by Tessa Blair on the, the Quera. You gotta ask yourself, what, what moves could Tessa Blair not do at this point? Have you ever seen anything really possible from Tessa Blair's repertoire on her moveset? Oh, spin up power. You've seen a lot of back and forth and, and back. Offense between these three double X's here. And obviously, the three double X's that last the very end is obviously going to take a lot just to really make them throw them over the ropes. But now it's crunch time. Now it's time to leave three women to realize that it's not just a matter of how what it takes to not get thrown over the ropes. It's a matter of not making that mistake, not turning your back for a second to allow one of your opponents to throw you over the ropes and make that crucial error, that crucial mistake that's going to cost an opportunity to move the main event at pandemonium for the women's championship of the world. But in my opinion, if anybody deserves it, it's Tessa Blair to these three women. And hell, I mean, even Night Terror, she wins, you're going to get an amazing match. If she, but only if she faces Aaron M or whoever she faces, but whoever faces Night Terror for women's champion, you know they're gonna have a lot of guts and courage to step in with Night Terror like these two other double matches, Tessa and Baclara. Close on to no avail. And in my opinion, because Baclara has that briefcase that allows her to cash in and get a women's up women's top of the time damn near pleases. In my opinion, I don't think the question would be allowed to compete in this match. He already has a title opportunity. That's a Mitch Larson for you. Oh no, I guess that Tessa on the receiving end of headstone. Oh! Drives Tessa to head first on the man. It's a damn shame that it, oh shoulder block and Tessa Blair to get back in the ring there. And in my opinion, like I said, I wouldn't even allow the pro to compete in a match like this because she like I said she has a pretty has a guaranteed tile match. So being two, having the opportunity to get two, this seems kind of unfair for the other double axes. Because unlike Night Terror and Tessa Blair. The player doesn't have to win a match in order to become, in order to get a win the so all she's got to do is show up and that's it. But like I said, that's Mitch Larson for you. You never really understand his logic. But listen to he's at the roll All right, that huge, that huge takedown, that huge spear by Tesla Blair down here, cutting the player in half. Oh, wait, oh, look at that. Almost looked like Night Terror, like her own version of Bully's garbage disposal there. He's going back and falls with that huge drop kick there. The player answers with that 
one clothesline. There's definitely a lot of back and forth action involving these three double X's as, as of late. They're going to try this again. The Knights are confusing to let go of the bottom row, but oh, and again, that huge spear. Oh, I mean, oh! They let the Knights have an answer for Tessa Blair that time. Focus on Tessa to eliminate her here. But Tessa is going to get back out of harm's way. Oh, I guess Mike Terry's not done anything to try it again. I guess this time Mike Terry's going to want the Claire's help, and, but by doing so, Tessa is once again able to break away from that. Oh, huge, huge choke slam by Night Terror. And now Night Terror to gather some of the strength from, 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 from the ether here, from, from, from the shadow realm, as he calls it. And Tessa Clara kind of limited credibility, but the Clara, oh, wait a minute, oh, wait a minute, oh, wait a minute, oh, my! Wait, but Night Terror limiting both the Quera and Tesla simultaneously. Oh, let's see some reaction or replay here. Let's see how this is how Night Terror is victorious. We make both Tesla and the Quera by herself. Night Terror. But while you like it or not, Night Terror victorious here this evening. Being a sole survivor, coming in at number eight, surviving all 1,400 double X's. We get the huge win here tonight. And now she has that golden ticket, that one-way ticket to that very show right there. Pandemonium 13 in Chicago, the grandest stage of the ball on May 5th. Night Terror pointing up there, pointing up to immortality. Now that she has an opportunity to face the women's chip on the greatest stage of the ball. Because while you're right here, my night terror has silver paint, one to nine. And now, she's going to be facing the champion at Pandemonium 13 in Chicago, in Soldier Field, on May 5th of this year. Folks, we're on the path to Pandemonium here at Square Despair. But this is not our next, this is not our last season. This is not our last season. We're just, we're just getting started. We're on CBD, the last CBD before, before Pandemonium. It's going to be Love at First Fight in the American Airlines Center in Dallas, Texas. Love at First Fight. For all the double X's and super of the CW on the show, they're going to display their love, the master of their craft, and do what it takes to survive the path of Pandemonium. The folks at Love at First Fight, it's the crossroads. It's when those will decide if they want to go on the path of pandemonium or do they choose the path to damnation. Only the strong-willed will survive while at first fight. Coming in March, folks, don't miss it. Live on CBD in March. Oh, oh, wait, wait a minute. Oh, we're backstage once again with Alpha Omega. Wait a minute. Wait, that's Jane Reppin and Rich Rubin of the, of the Diamond Club. This one means here trying to... Scorespear match up next, but they got their other hands full with Alpha Omega. And we saw earlier tonight what the Alpha Omega did to the Sultans of Wrestling. All this throwing Rich Rubin into the air like that. That's a damn shammy. This is goes exactly what Alpha Omega was saying earlier today. They were going to systematically destroy all the tag teams here in Egypt until there was nobody left. The question is, is, why are they doing this? Oh! And Jim, uh, Rich Rubin's gonna fight back to the Enigma here, but oh! And Rich Rubin is being double teamed by Vicious and the Enigma, and here comes Jim Rapid here. Oh, cart is exploding. Oh! Oh, damn it, that shot! Bulldog is busting open. 
Rich Rubin is just absolutely motionless right now. Tombstone. They're just vicious. The Enigma Tag Team Champions laying waste down to the Diamond Club. That's a damn shame. I guess mission accomplished for you know, Alpha Omega here this evening. Don't forget that per order of Mick Watterson, the owner of the UW, he has ordered that Lucas has to defend his No Limits title here tonight. And whoever eliminates him will be the new No Limits champion here tonight. But folks, let's go show you who's all on tap here in the, the scorecard matchup. So, of course, Alex Shelley, Alex Richards, Bray Vesperia, Murphy Law, the enforcer Nick Willis, Spike, Supreme, the Diamond Club. Lucas, the Destroyer, Super Saiyan Broly, Planet X, and Gene Stone here tonight. Crossbone Fix was star studded. Snorrisburg match here to Dayton. Dayton, which one of these 15 men are going to move on to the main event to face the UWA champion of the world in the main event match of Pandemonium 12 at the big dance at the big Kahuna, the money match, the biggest event of the entire year, Pandemonium 13. Well, this is what it's all about, though. This is a spoiled despair time. And this is what we're going to find out first of these 15 minutes. We're going to do each other to achieve immortality.
ladies and gentlemen, it is now time for the Square of Despair match featuring the top 15 superstars of the UWA. Introducing first, the man that drew number one. Tonight, this man is looking at Square of Despair as the launching point to return him to the grandest stage of them all, Pandemonium. An opportunity to win back the most coveted prize of all. Hailing from Heathens Road Temple. He is the master of the Kimwanian Cyber and the Kimwanian Destroyer, ladies and gentlemen. This is the God of War, the Destroyer! From Baltimore, Maryland, he is the master of the gateway shuffle that the real folk blues, ladies and gentlemen. This is Spy! Now to the man that drew number three. After a long, momentous return at Plain of Fate, he has been gone for almost a year and a half. This man will be to regain championship gold. Ladies and gentlemen, he is one half of Brave Asperity. He is the master of the banging double Ds and the glimmer of heaven. Ladies and gentlemen, this is R to the Aven, Raven! This is the man that drew number four. Tonight, he is looking not just once again to want to remain again at Pandemonium, but to survive individuals who are looking to claim his spot. He is the first ever full house champion 
in EWA history. He is the master of the Outlaw Star Smash and the Galactic Lady. This is the Outlaw Star himself, Gene Starwin. There's the belt, here we go. And don't forget folks, also per order of Mitch Watterson, he forced S Spike and the Destroyer to start out as number one and number two here tonight at Still Despair. To ensure these two men come to blows here tonight. It's back at Clean the Fame. Spike made his triumphant return at Clean the Fame. And who was there to break up Spike's welcome return party is of course the destroyer the same man that put spike on the shelf back at bloodshed the spikes was we came back he had a message to the UA fans as well as all the as well as all the UWA superstars now, 2013 is going to be the year he becomes a champion once and for all He's no longer going to be a stepping stone. He's no longer going to be this uh, another guy on the rock. He's not going to be the guy who lives in Gene Stalin's shadow. He's going to be a UA champion. The Spike, just like Lucas, are two UWA originals who've been in this company almost since day one and has never been UWA champion. And Spike wants to become a champion once and for all. Of course, the Destroyer was offended. He took exception what Spike had to say about being the champion, about his team aspirations. Spike said he can go through everybody, anybody, who does whatever it takes to become the champion. And he mentioned the Destroyer's name. And the Destroyer took exception because the Destroyer is not just a stepping stone for anybody to become the champion. Of course, that kind of thing, Spike and Lister, they both came to blows. They required officials and Negro backstage management in order to break up these two individuals. And we, see, uh, we also saw two separate occasions on assault where these two were fighting for the backstage were required more individuals to pick up that fight. And Mitch Martin was absolutely, was, he just had enough to hear with the Destroyer and Spike's brouhaha. And it said as a punishment that if they want to match at Square Square, they're going to fight each other in the Square Square matchup. But to ensure that they fight each other, to ensure that luck of the draw and, and rightfully placed eliminations within the match doesn't prevent them from facing each other, he decided, decided they're gonna, they're gonna, he's going to have Spike in the Square number one and two here tonight at Square to Square. So if any of these two wants to know what it's like to become the champion, for the Destroyer's sake, once again, being the main event playing the moment, then Spike and the Destroyer, well, they're just going to have to survive this entire match against 13 of their other opponents, and they want that to happen. And the Destroyer is in no time going after Raven here. Of course, Raven saw him make a year and a half triumphant return and claim the fame. Back in that tag team elimination gauntlet matchup. And we know Brave the Spare, they've been looking. They want to once again reclaim the girls' tag team championships. Oh, look at this. Oh, my, that huge Kimwani inside for on the Raven. Oh, look, oh yeah, he's not dead. He's going to fall up to the Kimwani Destroyer here. Oh, and flips him over onto his head. Oh, wait, Spike getting involved here. It turns over Raven. Oh, Raven steals the elimination here. And now Ray, or excuse me, Spike steals the elimination. Now Raven is now in the books. And quick work of Raven.
And this doesn't make any sense. And Vicious, he's not scheduled to be on the, in the Spurgeburg matchup because he's the tag team champion. He won't have to win for the world tag team champion. Well, you don't think, well, I mean, it could be possible that because Alpha Omega eliminated, just took out of, out of the picture, brutalized both the Sultans of Wrestling and the Diamond Club. I don't think Nick Waters is allowing Vicious to be here tonight. Well, he's coming out here. Wait, I'm mean, seeing word in the headset right now. Wait, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. That rumor is indeed, that speculation is indeed true. And Vicious, I guess, is, it, is taking the place of JN Rapid. No thanks to what this man in his second part of the Enigma did. Seriously, folks, we need these damn answers. Hopefully, Mitch Washington is listening to this. Hopefully, you don't manage this listening to this. Hopefully, all you guys in the locker room are listening to this. But somebody needs to find answers as to why. Why Vicious and the Enigma, not only are they, why are they tag team partners, but why are they targeting all the tag teams here in UWA. And they're, and they're not just targeting them just to beat them up, they're targeting them to, to lay them to waste. And we can just assume that based on what they just did to Alpha, or to, to the Songs of Wrestling and the Diamond Club here tonight. I mean, obviously Alpha Omega is here to leave us some sort of valuable statement on the entire roster. Oh! And you remember, you all recall what Alpha Omega did to Brave Asperia after they won the match, but claim the fame. And no surprise here, Vicious going right after Spike, the real Vicious. And all the steam starting that huge corkscrew. And folks, this isn't the only, this isn't the first time we've seen Spike and the destroyer meet each other in the Spurspurg matchup. And now that both these men met each other in the Spurspurg matchup in 2011, of course, both these, both these men moved on and faced each other in the main event at Pandemonium 11 that year. Don't forget, believe it or not, three of these four men in the ring here, Gene Stalin, Fight and destroy We're all part of that faction warriors of the world that formed together right after Pandemonium 11, which eventually died out by claim the fame of that year. Spike, Gene Stone, and Destroyer, all three of those men, they all they're they're not strangers, that's for damn sure. They all know each other quite well. But I guess the destroyer, I guess he's throwing out that history of being spike that. Just because he took exception to what Spike said. And don't forget folks, last, even that last year's Spell the Spell, the Destroyer, he was also one of the first four participants in last year's Spell the Spell matchup. So the Destroyer knows a thing to him how to survive these type of matches. But of course for the Destroyer, it, Oh my oh, that's like the fourth time my table was destroyed. That spine buster by the destroyer. And last year's spell the spell destroyer. He had that surprise de defeat by Lucas. And I think still to this day, the destroyer has never quite got over that loss in the Lucas. Especially when he lost to Lucas one. 1-1, one, one, got pinned 1-2-3 one, by Lucas, back at Beef Party Slam, and there's no excuses whatsoever. Oh, the destroyer here. Oh, the spirit is sent to the guard on the outside, and he's going to go up top, rope it. Oh, my! 